Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network, the 49ers of UNC Charlotte and the Rams of VCU. Hello everyone, I'm Don Russell. UNC Charlotte lost its season opener in the Metro to Louisville. Now they've ripped off three straight wins. VCU won its opening game in league play. Now has dropped three in a row. Two of those to Louisville, one to Tulane and Terry Gannon. Neither one of those teams have lost yet in conference play. Too early for a two-team race yet, but a very important game for both. I think a pivotal game in the Metro race. The operative word tonight, pivotal all night long, Don. And, you know, you look at uh, VCU needing a win after the home loss to Louisville on Saturday. UNC Charlotte, a team that some people forgot. Kind of a sleeper at this point. Three and one, still with a chance uh, to win the Metro title. You look at what they do, and they've been getting it done on the inside with their big guy, Rodney Odom, who I think is still underrated in this conference. Their leading scorer, leading rebounder, maybe their best center since the great cornbed Maxwell back in the late 70s. Big matchup for him, though, tonight in the paint. VCU, a great one of their own. Kendrick Warren getting it done. He can explode at any time, take a ball game over. But I think the key for the Rams, Sharon Mills, who went to the bench nine games ago, has played fantastic basketball since then. Gives him a big lift off the bench. Right now ranks number one in field goal percentage in the Metro, Don. It's the 49ers of UNC Charlotte taking on the Rams of VCU. Metro Conference Basketball on Prime Network. We're glad to have you along, and you'll meet the starting lineups with us from Richmond in just a moment. And we're back at the Richmond Coliseum in Richmond, Virginia, UNC Charlotte and VCU. It should be a good matchup. And now let's meet the starting lineups. The public address announcer, Hunter Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, a very pleasant good evening and welcome to the Richmond Coliseum for tonight's Metro Conference matchup, which features our guests this evening, the 49ers of the University of North Carolina at Charlotte and your Rams of Virginia Commonwealth University. Introducing tonight's starting lineups, first for the visiting 49ers of UNC Charlotte. Starting at a forward position, a sophomore from Farmville, North Carolina, number 23, Jarvis Lang. Starting at the other forward position is a senior from Mount Olive, North Carolina, number 25, Cedric Broadhurst. Starting at the center position for the 49ers, a junior from Kingwood, Texas, number 43, Rodney Odom. Starting at a guard position, a junior from Grimesland, North Carolina, number 20, for Sean Thompson. And starting at the other guard, a freshman from Charlotte, number 30, Andre Davis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand and greet your starting VCU man. Starting at a forward position, a sophomore from Bethune, South Carolina, number 22, Tyrone McCoy. Starting at the other forward, a junior from right here in Richmond, number 23, Kendrick. Number 42, Eugene Kassori. Starting at a guard position, a junior from Columbia, South Carolina. Number four, Terrence Gibson. And starting at the other guard, a junior from Petersburg. Number 12, Kenny Harris. VCU 10 and 6 overall. One and three in the Metro, UNC Charlotte, nine and seven on the year, three and one in league play. The starting lineups have been introduced. We'll have the opening tip from the Richmond Coliseum on Prime Network in the Metro in just a moment. Richmond, Virginia, Richmond Coliseum, UNC Charlotte, and VCU on Prime Network in the Metro. And Terry Gannon who will be watching some very interesting matchups as we see the starting lineup side by side. I think especially in the middle, because Soren, the Russian, in the paint against Odom. You know, in the 49ers, a great rebounding team. So it's going to be a key tonight to see Soren as well as Warren on the glass. 
The series record overall dominated by VCU. You can see last year VCU winning here and then losing. Actually that game played at Davison College but this has not been a kind place for the 49ers. In 14 games in Richmond Coliseum they won twice. And we'll see if that plays on their mind at all. Oftentimes players don't really pay much attention to history. They're not really history buffs. They just want to come in and play a game. Eugene Kasurin gets the steal right off the bat for VCU. Kasurin, a real question mark. He injured his ankle in practice a couple of days ago, Terry, and we weren't sure we were going to see him in the lineup. Looks pretty good now, though, John. He's moving around pretty well. Kendrick Warren comes up short. And the 49ers with it. This is Bashan Thompson. Inside to Jarvis Lang, and Lang, that off-balance jumper, and this is our first look at Jarvis Lang on Prime Network. He missed our earlier game with a jam thumb against Virginia Tech. Important for him to get off well early. I think, you know, if he doesn't, he tends to get frustrated, Don. He got the ball the first time down. He got a bucket. I think that'll really help his confidence. They force a pass to Warren this time down low, and Lang comes up with a steal. And Thompson looking for some help and finds Andre Davis, the freshman. And Davis pulls the trigger. And it's chased down by Kenny Harris, and the Rams look for the early offense. McCoy, we're tied. Yeah, I think you'll see that tonight early. VCU trying to get some easy buckets in transition. UNC Charlotte is a great half-court defensive team. Man to man, they're in your face. They don't give up much, and they rebound very well. So I think the Rams are going to have to get some easy ones, Don. No question about that. Sonny Smith says that the 49ers, without a doubt, the best half-court defensive team in the Metro. A reach-around foul on Eugene Kasurin. That's his first. First foul in the game. Jeff Mullins, his eighth year at UNC Charlotte. And Sonny Smith, it is fourth year here at VCU. Half court set, Charlotte. Trying to be patient tonight. When they shoot well, Don, they usually play well. It's all keyed off of their shooting. They go right to Lang the first two times down the court. Lang had a couple of opportunities. Warren got a piece of one of them. So the Rams looking for their first lead in the game. Kenny Harris, who's been playing such solid basketball, the transfer from North Carolina. Sonny Smith has to be pleased with the way he's performed. Thompson knocks it out of bounds. Harris, of course, a junior from nearby Petersburg, Virginia. And a career high 18 points in the last outing against Louisville that VCU lost by two, a heartbreaker in overtime. Watch the matchup down low on the block. Jarvis Lane against Warren. And Harris didn't give a chance to, to watch that match. He didn't. Harris, who's been shooting very well, did not look very efficient on that effort. We're tied at two. We've played almost three minutes in this one. By the way, Don Rutledge, Wally Tanner, and Steve Wilmer are officials tonight out of the Metro. Good crew tonight, Don. Very good crew out of the Metro Conference. Broadhurst straight away to Thompson, picked up by Harris. Well, James Terrell no longer in this lineup. The shooter for UNC Charlotte. Nice move, move down low by Odom, and he'll do that if you allow him to catch the ball that low. But Trigger leaving the team for personal reasons in the 49ers without another shooter. Speaking of shooters, this guy can shoot it from anywhere. Kendrick Warren, the leading scorer in the Metro at 18-6 a game, add nine rebounds to that, has his first two, and we're tied at four. You can't ask for a better matchup than we have tonight. Two marquee players, just great athletes. So how about Davis? <laughs> I mean, coming on against Southern Miss about a week ago in Hattiesburg, he lit him up for 26, but Terrell was not in the lineup. He has his first two in the game. Harris misses his second effort in this one. So UNC Charlotte with a two-point lead and the ball. I think Andre Davis is really going to be a heck of a player for the 49ers. Finally getting a chance to play in the roles on this team more clearly defined at this point. And, you know, even though you hate to lose a guy like James Terrell, I think at this point the 49ers know what their roles are. And from here on out, I think you'll see a pretty good basketball team. First time tonight, they go back into his zone. 
They have Thompson on the point of that zone defensively, so they'll test the perimeter shooting of VCU. McCoy has it slapped away, but Broadhurst touched it, so Tyrone able to chase it down. Let's watch. It may or may not be a zone. I think it's a man to man. They're just really sagging. Look at how much space there is between Davis and the ball here. Kassarin doesn't get the turnaround jumper, but he does draw the 49er foul. And it's going to be on Rodney Odom. His first, first UNCC foul of the night. So with 15 44 left, that's one thing that the 49ers cannot afford to have happen is. Odom getting in foul trouble. That's really not a good foul. Little slap on the wrist that uh, doesn't affect Kassorin that much. But behind Odom, you got a guy like Jermaine Parker who has not played a whole heck of a lot. And Aaron Wilhite, who started the year in the starting lineup, but has gone to the bench since Jarvis Lane went back to the power forward spot. BC only 63% at the free throw line of the team. Kassorin 53, and he makes one out of two. Gets his first point in the game. We have a break in the action. 6-5 UNC Charlotte leading VCU. We'll be back to Richmond on Prime in just a moment. Now we talked about the paint being so important. A little pressure and the travel. So out of the timeout, Sonny Smith goes to the full court pressure and uh, the 49ers turn it over. But getting back to the point that, you know, at some point outside shooting is really going to be a key in this game because both teams are trying to take away the inside game. You can see Charlotte, the better of the shooting percentage here early. VCU was on a roll early this season, then went into a woeful shooting slump. Recovered somewhat against Louisville. There's a partially blocked shot by Warren. Jarvis Lang got a piece of it, and Lang gets it right back. Oh, and jams it home. You talk about playing it from both ends of the floor, Terry. That is unbelievable by the sophomore. Hey, Donnie, just kept going up, up, and up. When he took off, I couldn't believe he was going to try to dunk that basketball. He made the block at one end, busted it to get to the other end of the court, and finished it off with style. What well, a great start for Lang and with the big matchup against Warren. That is really a plus for the 49ers. As Jarvis started this season inside. Actually, has moved now to the power forward. Played the, the small forward earlier, and he just wasn't comfortable with it at all. Yeah, VCU struggling in the half court set right now. They, they really are not sure what they want to do, but Sonny going to a bigger lineup, and this is one of the things that he talked about. Article in the paper today, Sonny Smith talking about going to a, a big lineup, and right now Mills in the ball game. He's been playing very well. In there with Warren, and at times, Sonny will go to Mills and Kassorin at the same time. You can't do that against, say, a Tulane or the smaller traffic clubs. You can against UNC Charlotte. Mills on the defense against Odom. Davis to Trey. Got it. Andre Davis continues his red-hot shooting out of Independence High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. I don't feel much intensity in this building at this point, and obviously that hurts the home club. There was an awful lot of it on Saturday in that loss to Louisville, and it's tough to get it back. Mills can't get the little baby jumper. Sharon is a 6'9 senior out of Snow Hill, Maryland. Thompson doesn't get this three. Almost tipped in by Lang. And then the Rams get the rebound and then throw it away. What was it John Wooden always said? Be quick, but don't hurry. That's right. Sonny just said the same thing. But I don't think he minds that because they're looking to push the ball up, and I, I think they need to, to do that. They need to get a breakaway dunk by Kendrick Ward or, or a Mills on the break to get the crowd into the ballgame to pick up the intensity somehow. Here's Odom. Inside got open from a couple of Rams, and Rodney has his second field goal of the game. Too easy. Bucket by numbers that time. 13 to 5. UNC Charlotte. VCU fell behind to Louisville by 15 and then came storming back. But you can't expect to do that on every occasion. Now this is almost a matchup zone at this point. It, they're really sagging in the paint trying to take away the inside game. McCoy comes up short. Odom fights and gets the rebound. And here come the 49ers. Broadhurst, uh -oh. alley oop. A little too tall for Jarvis Lang. Jarvis can climb the ladder, but that one was a little bit out of reach. That was out of sight. Yeah. That was David Thompson high that time. You know, speaking of Cedric Broadhurst, though, he is their best passer on the team. 
And Jeff Mullins really going now with a, a real perimeter-oriented team, and I think now they're beginning to settle in, as you alluded to earlier, Taylor. See if VCU can get some side-to-side -side movement, some movement of the basketball and their personnel. They really haven't done that. They've been standing around. A little more motion this time. Warren, tough shot under pressure, missed it. And Thompson goes in to get the rebound and brings it up for the 49ers. A block shot by Warren as he slaps it away from Davis. And at the other end, contact and a 49er foul. Bernard Rashawn Thompson gets his first foul. That's the second on the Rams. Not a bad foul, though, by Thompson. I, I had the sense that this might be it for the Rams. You get a dunk with Mills trailing. Thompson takes it right away. Make sure that he doesn't give up the basket. He also makes sure that Harris goes to the free throw line and he, instead of getting the little layup. And I thought Harris maybe could have given that ball up a little earlier. Kenny Harris. He really beginning to click the past two games. He's averaged 16 points, five and a half assists, four and a half rebounds, and a couple of steals, and has shot 56% from the floor, but has not been able to cash in on a couple of field goal efforts and misses his first free throw. That was Sonny Smith. <laughs> we were talking about free throws before the game, and he oh. said, I just don't know what to do. Tough to coach free throws. The more you talk about it, the more your team thinks about it. You don't want them to think about it. Should be an easy assignment. Stepping to the line and just making a free throw. You look at the run by the 49ers, but in the half court set, hasn't been up and down. Davis misses from the outside. The Rams really looking to get something going as Chris Brower, the three point shooting expert, the senior, checks into the VCU lineup. He's out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida. McCoy from the corner. And that's a two. He was on the line. Yeah, but it was an outside shot, and that should open things up a little bit inside. Now you have to come out, and you have to defend McCoy, and you also always have to defend a Brower, who can light it up. A six-point 49er lead, Odom against a double team. Thompson drills it, and it's a tray. You know, he's shooting better, too. Seven of eight his last game. If he gets his feet set, he can bury that. Warren trying to go one-on-one. -on -one. Mauru Dotton, a 6'6 senior out of California in the UNC Charlotte lineup. He wears number three in the green. Everybody's sagging except Andre Davis, who is staying pretty close to Chris Brower, and that's just not a good angle to make that pass. Thompson comes up with a loose ball, puts oh. it up over Sharon Mills with the left hand. What a shot, huh? Wow. Thompson puts on a show at 18 to 7, UNC Charlotte and Richmond. The 49ers playing well early, and this is one of the few times they've gotten out on the break. Watch the move by Vershawn Thompson. 6-3 against 6-9. Mills plays him pretty well. Doesn't commit the foul, but how about the left hand keeping the body away and the kiss off the glass? Pretty. Yeah, it, that's a big story early. I mean, 12 to 2 in the paint, that tells the story, and that, that's why it's an 11 point game. Mills off the baseline, not there. Kassarin back in, and this is the follow. Mills almost got the tip, and now the 49ers come out on the run. Broadhurst to Wilhite, who's into the lineup, and Thompson can't hit it from the outside. For the first time, the big lineup in for Sonny Smith, though. Kassarin and Mills. And they got a putback, at least a tip the first time down. Harris misses the three. Aaron Wilhite wears 44 in the green for UNC Charlotte. 6'7 junior out of San Diego. Transfer from Cal State Fullerton. 18-7, the 49ers. Davis under pressure draws the Ram foul. Both Brower and Kassarin were there. That's one of the things that you like about Davis. Brower frustrated because but Davis is a pretty strong off guard, small forward. He can play a couple of positions for you, and he can take you in the lane as well as shooting the three-point shot. Great shooter out of Charlotte Independence High School. See Terrence Gibson back into the VCU lineup. The foul, by the way, was against Kasser in his second. He has both of the Ram fouls in the game, and Davis cashes in at the charity strike. Bobby Coomer, 6'6", freshman, out of Michigan. A real hard-nosed player for Jeff Mullins. And 
Yeah, real hard-nosed and tough. A tough guy told me to uh, say hello to his mother back in Michigan. Ruins his image. <laughs> he is a tough one, boy. He's been uh, a real hard-nosed freshman performer for UNCC. And Davis cashes in on a couple of occasions. Has seven in the game. And it's a 13-point UNC Charlotte lead. Especially with the big lineup in, Charlotte will try to take away the inside game. See if Brower can get off an outside shot. McCoy forced one over Coomer. And as Mills tries to go back up, Thompson will get the foul. Jeff Mullins talking to Don Rutledge. He thought there was a travel or something inside. Second foul on Bershon. Pretty good penetration, but kind of a forced shot in the lane. But Mills, with the, again, with the two big men in, Went ahead and, and crashed the glass. Looked like he may have shuffled the feet before the foul, but he got away with it. I think that's what uh, Jeff Mullins was talking to Don Rutledge about. It brought her back into the lineup. Sean Thompson gets a rest. And Kareem Washington, a 6'5 sophomore out of Lansing, Michigan, in for VCU. Here's a player that Sonny Smith plans to use more as well, Terry. Pretty good defensive player. In now he can play a couple of positions as well. Smooth player. Sharon Mills, a good free throw shooter at 77%, has his first game and uh, point in the contest. Leads the Metro Conference in field goal percentage, as you can see, and does quite well in a couple of other categories as well. And nothing but the bottom of the sack in both of those occasions. Twice they've gone to the full court trap. They've gotten two turnovers out of it. We'll see if Sonny Smith goes to more of that, not just off the main free throw. This is Gibson at it. And Mills one-on-one -on -one off balance shot not there. Dotton got a piece of it. And Wilhite has it for the 49ers. Not the, uh, the shot that Sonny wanted, to say the least. Washington extreme pressure out near the timeline against Broadhurst. 20 to 9, UNC Charlotte, 9.23 left in the first half on the Richmond Coliseum clock. And it's knocked out of bounds and it belongs to VCU. This is really where Charlotte is just trying to uh, just keep pace at this point. You got Lang on the bench, you had Thompson on the bench. Odom not in there as well. And, and VCU, as you see, Brower getting arrested. I think it has to make a little run here, make up some ground while you have Odom and Lang on the bench. They have not been able to do it, Doc. Mike Hargett, 5'11 senior out of Highland Springs, Maryland, checks in. Gibson had the rebound, lost it. Hargett saves it in. Gibson in traffic, gas off the glass. Well, it doesn't matter who does it. It was the guards underneath getting the rebounds as long as they get it back up and in. The UNCC advantage is nine. Davis pull up with a jumper too strong. The serve the rebound. Rams looking to run. No, 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 Offensive foul. Did not have the numbers. Decisions, decisions, and Terrence Gibson knew it. As soon as he threw it, he pointed to himself and said, my bad. Never give it up to a big guy running full court, full speed. There's nothing good that can happen giving it to Mills at that point. That's like a big semi not having a steep hill to go into to slow down. That's right. There's no sand, no runaway lane. That's so right. Go right down the lane. Nice job by Coomer taking the body shot, giving up his body. Well, but you could see it happening. You could see it develop. And that was a chance, too, with the crowd into it. They just scored a bucket. You come back and try to get a one off the run, and it didn't happen. And Jarvis Lyon, who hasn't touched the ball in some time, does this time, but evidently shoved off inside to try to get it. It's his first person. Either coach using their, uh, their seats very often tonight, early, <laughs> early on. Not at all. A nine-point Charlotte lead. Don Russell, Terry Gannon, we're glad to have you along on Prime Network, our weekly coverage of the Metro Conference. Good pressure defensively by the 49ers. Now that's, you make that pass tough, 
And VCU trying to set up the high-low, but you're getting the big man out towards the top of the key way too high, Doc. Just under the eight-minute mark left in the first half. 20-11, UNC Charlotte over VCU. Back on Prime in a moment. Well, Terry, we mentioned at the top of the telecast uh, why this was such an important game as you look at the Metro standings. Well, UNC Charlotte at 3-1. and one. They go to 4-1, and one and, and they're sitting fine. I mean, not only to come in show, come in third place, but to have a shot at win. Visha, you can't go 1-4 and four to have a shot. They need to win this at home. Target thought about it. And by the way, Louisville hosting South Florida tonight, and Tulane with a big game over at Virginia Tech. And you see Charlotte still lighting it up from the outside. VCU only 4 of 18. Well, you credit some of that to the 49ers defense, but also there has really been no rhythm in the offense. And he will shoot the three. He can't shoot it. Don't be shocked to see Kassoran go up. Take that one. Crowd and Sonny Smith wanted a goaltend. He rimmed it, and Sonny and the Ram faithful thought it was pulled off the paint on the uh, orange rim a little bit too early. Lang down low, and Mills cannot stay with him. Yeah, if he comes out at all, Mills doesn't have the quickness to stay with him. Jarvis Lang with six points, and it seems like every time he has touched the ball, he has been able to score. Boy, he's so quick with the basketball when he gets it. And tonight, more so than any other time this year. He is really playing with confidence at this point. Of course, Lang as a freshman led all scores and freshman rebounders in the nation. Target hits the tray. Well, if Mike Target could ever begin to light it up from three-point land, he could be a big addition off the bench. Well, and he can, too, Don. He's been a proven scorer in college basketball. He's just been in a terrible slump. Odom tries to go to the reverse side with it. And one of the Rams reached in. I think it was Terrence Gibson who indeed gets the foul. That's his first. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Hargan, of course, transferred here from George Mason, and he was a big-time player there. He's their leading scorer. And he has just not produced like his prior numbers said that he would. Is Soren getting a rest? Warren and Tyrone McCoy back in for VCU. You see Coomer going to the bench. How would you describe that hairstyle? Well, a lot of the guys going in short hairstyles. Rodney's going to get that curly cue on top and nothing on the side. Let's call it a natural look. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> Very kind. Uh, yeah. I try to be. But you're right. You talk about a guy that is underrated in the Metro. Those numbers would back that up. It's one out of two. Charlotte has led pretty much from the get-go. Another slow offensive start for VCU. This guy, Warren, has only two points. And he's averaging almost 19 a game. Thompson leading the break. Oh, Lang! Jarvis Lang! When he gets it in that position, forget it. Well, you know, he normally gets it in that position. He's caught it not on the block and on the break right under the basket a number of times tonight. At the other end, he's doing a great job on Kendrick Warren, too. Really Offensively, is. defensively, look at him bang on Kendrick Warren. Making everything tough, and that's why the pass is tough. And he forced the turnover. Broadhurst tries to get it up court to Lang and let him a little bit too much, and Jarvis couldn't chase it down. There's Lang only a sophomore. Preseason All-Metro, a lot of preseason All-American teams. Already has 19 double doubles, including his freshman year when he had 15 of them. I think what you have to do if you're VCU is move it side to side before you go to Kendrick Warren. So they go away from his side, then swing it back. Target. That, they had it done. That they did indeed. Warren wasn't looking for the pass and couldn't hang on to it. And Thompson comes up with a loose ball for UNC Charlotte. An 11 point lead for the 49ers, 520 left in the first half. We're glad to have you along wherever you may be watching on Prime Network. We're in the Metro Conference. Thompson, the three. Almost got the friendly bounce. And Broadhurst had it and lost it out of bounds. They're all green jerseys around the basket. They may have lost it, but Jeff Mullins doesn't mind. It's a mistake, perhaps, but a mistake of aggressiveness. They were really crashing the glass tonight, as they do all the time. Turnovers even at this point. You know, UNC Charlotte, number 12 in the country in terms of rebounding margin. 
8.8 more than their opponents. Warren gets it inside for the easy two. Kendrick has points three and four. And it's under double digits now. And they went away from him, came back underneath. A nice pass. I don't think you can start on his side. Lang is playing him too tough. Odom from the outside, and Rodney drills it. Now, this is a simple game that's hard to play, Don. Right now, offensively, now you get the high-low with Odom and Lang, and you have to take your pick. Who are you going to guard? Knocked out of bounds. Touched last by UNC Charlotte. Jeff Mullins over there. Quick hands of yeah, Jeff Mullins. Looked like he was going to tip that back in. I'll tell you what, that guy was Mr. Basketball in the state of Kentucky out of Lexington, Lafayette. Went on, won an Olympic gold medal, was an All-American at Duke. Scored only 13,000 points in the NBA. That's it. He could still shoot. Yesterday, he shot 19 free throws and not only made him, did not touch anything but the bottom of the sack. He still has the touch. Ah, he told you that. You didn't witness that. Well, Mark Colon, their SID, actually told me. Oh, his publicist told you Yes. That. And I would believe no, it. Believe me, I believe it. <laughs> then he hit the rim, I think, on the return. 27-16, Charlotte. Davis in traffic, hooks it up. McCoy might have knocked it off guard a little bit and owed him. Underneath, fighting to get the rebound, and Terrence Gibson actually got it and then stepped on the paint for Sonny Smith. 27-16, Sonny Smith and the Rams fighting back at home. Back with more on Prime after this. Welcome back. 27-16, UNC Charlotte over VCU. That's the time remaining in the first half. As we're in the Metro Conference. Sonny Smith talking to uh, his Rams, and now also talking to Wally Tanner a little bit as well. Trying to get every edge he can. Sonny, the great career at Auburn University, actually started at East Tennessee State. Well, I challenge our guys to get a shot of him when he's not talking on the side. <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. A good defense out of the timeout, right in front of Sonny. He's got to be happy. The five second. And the turnover gives the basketball to VCU. Steve Welmer having a few things to say to Sonny. Sonny takes a step away. And now we'll take a seat momentarily. Boy, he's had success everywhere he's been. Yeah, he really has. Coached some great ones. McCoy thought about three. Mills for two. Warren tips no, and Odom gets to Carroll. But well, they had Kendrick wide open down low with Lang on his back. And they missed him. Thompson working against Harris. Dish in, back outside. Now Davis tries the right side. Good ball movement. They go side to side. Now it's got to go inside, outside. Nope, you don't go there, Ron. It's got to go outside for a jump shot. Don't dribble it in traffic. Gibson off to Harris. They just can't get the bucket to get everybody up out of their seats. They can't get that big right. bucket here. Everybody's to get about going. halfway. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the, hear the crowd start to get into it and then sit back down. 27-16. UNC Charlotte's pretty much led all the way. There's Odom. Again, the double team. Now Rodney kicks it out. And slapped away from behind by Gibson. Give it up, get it back. McCoy. Warren flips it. Yes! Count it! And a foul. Well, maybe that's it. Maybe that'll get him going a little bit. Awfully odd that we only have 2.30 left in this half, and Kendrick Warren does not have a dunk yet. They start the fast break. Mills gives it back up. McCoy, nowhere to go right here. Gives it out to Warren, and uh, Kendrick kind of takes his time. Couple of dribbles, goes up, gets the ticky-tack foul by Davis, and puts it in. And Warren misses the free throw. Only 51% at the line. Let's give credit where credit was due. I said Gibson created that steal. It was actually Kenny Harris. If you watch the replay, so a good defensive play by the transfer from North Carolina. Jarvis line from the outside, too strong. Harris goes in to get it. Mills, nice dish off to McCoy. Yeah, and what was nice about it, too, Mills caught the ball, stopped, and looked before he put it on the floor. He was under control. And now you got not only Sonny Smith up, but the rest of the crowd. Davis tries to quiet him with the three. Not there. A seven-point game. Here's there you go. McCoy. There you go. How about a timeout? Perhaps a timeout. 
for Jeff Mullins as the crowd finally gets the Rams back into this thing and vice versa. Well, Mullins has seen enough. He takes the timeout with a minute and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. 27, 22. UNC Charlotte maintains its lead against the Rams of VCU, but quite a comeback by VCU, and they got it cranked up now, T. Yeah, and we said they had to get some easy buckets. Can't get any easier than this. McCoy with the breakaway. Finally, they get the breakaway dunk, and they're right back into this thing, a five-point game, and it really started at the defensive end. Two quick steals now. Now the band cranks it up here in the Richmond Coliseum. This is a place that holds about 12,000. There have been large crowds earlier this year. The Long Beach State crowd was a big one. You can see VCU on its own run now in the last minute. Well, they got the steal by Harris and then kind of an unfortunate shot for the 49ers. Davis went up, not a good shot at all. Didn't come close, that started the fast break again. And so UNC Charlotte helping uh, create their own demise here in the last couple of minutes. And how often have we said the last two, two and a half minutes of the half and the first two minutes of the second half are so important. VCU, if they can sustain this for another four, uh, minute and 42 seconds, they have all the momentum going into the locker room. Of course, this Virginia Commonwealth team is the same one that blew away Long Beach State by 34, and then Long Beach State went on to Lawrence and uh, defeated then number one right Kansas. You see the field goal shooting beginning to get a little bit closer. Yeah, so VCU ought to be number one then. That's right. There's a steal by Gibson. He just throws it up. They're going to get him on the travel. Well, you're right, Terry. Every time the Rams have come with the pressure, it has bothered the 49ers. Three for three. They have come with it three times. They've got three turnovers. Here's the fourth time. And they're struggling with it again. Finally, right. Davis helps out. And they finally looked up the court, went through the middle. And but now look at the bounce and the step of the Rams. Right, Gibson right up in Thompson's face. Good pressure defense for maybe the first time in the half court set. They're looking to Lang. Thompson with the running jumper. No, Lang can't get the tip. Rebound Warren. And a steal by Davis, and then he lost it right at the feet of Jeff Mullins. Yeah, but you can see on the defensive end the pressure on the basketball for the first time tonight, and that's what created that. McCoy, Mills, Harris, the three. Offense out of your defense, even if it's not off of a steal. It gets them going. The inside-outside game. They move the basketball. And, boy, a different team in the last three minutes. A two-point game. Davis though takes it back to four. Andre saw the door open, and he walked right through. Big shot, huh? It was nine in the game for Andre Davis. He's the leading scorer in the game. No shot clock, so the Rams can hold for the last one, and that's what they'll do. That is the game clock you see inserted. 29-25, UNC Charlotte. Jeff Mullen will let them stand out and they'll take it with about eight seconds left. Harris will try to create, there he goes. And blocked by Jarvis Lang, rebound by UNC Charlotte, but they were on the baseline and quickly Jeff Mullins wants to get Coomer in the lineup. He didn't want Thompson to pick up uh, foul number three in the last 6.8 seconds. Now Harris having trouble, gets it in the Mills. Yes! Sharon Mills, a tough baseline jumper. And Charlotte does not get it in bounds, and we have a two-point game at the intermission. So it looked like the Rams of VCU had a long way to come back, but they got the Richmond Coliseum crowd on its feet and now pulled within two at the intermission. 29-27, UNC Charlotte, our halftime show is coming up next. Richmond, Virginia, 29-27, our halftime score. UNC Charlotte with the advantage over VCU. And we're glad that you're joining us and, and the Metro Conference. And Terry Gannon, obviously, 
statistically shooting is very important if you look at the stats UNC Charlotte really started out great shooting dropped off to 46 to very respectable Rams on the other hand were horrible and moved it up to 35 five from the floor anytime you move it up to 35 you know you're in trouble for most of the half but they, they did get it back in the late going in the first half but what they did is they controlled the boards during that time as well leading right now 20 to 17 in terms of the boards, and we talked about UNC Charlotte, how great they are on the backboards, and they limited them to only one offensive rebound. That was one of the keys. And also, the turnovers hurting the 49ers against the full court trap. They had 11 turnovers in the first half. VCU with 10 turnovers, most of those came early on. And our Gatorade halftime statistics, individual scoring. The leading scorer for UNC Charlotte, Andre Davis with nine, followed by Jarvis Lang with eight, and then you have Rodney Odom with seven, and then at the other end, Terry, eight points for Tyrone McCoy to lead the way. Kendrick Warren had but six, and Sharon Mills off the bench with four. Now, do you know if Kendrick Warren only has six and Mills has four, it wasn't a stellar first half for the Rams. That, <laughs> those two guys, you know, we didn't put them in our open for no reason at all. I mean, they, they have got to carry the load for VCU, especially Warren. They've got to get him the basketball, establish him early on here in the second half, and it's not easy against Lang. Turnovers, by the way, 11 for UNC Charlotte, 10 for VCU. And Warren was looking for the alley-oop, and it was knocked out of bounds. It belongs still to the Rams of VCU. But there's the quickness of Lang, and that's why Warren's pointing up at the rim. You got to get the ball up. There's no way with the quickness that Lang has, you're going to get that direct pass. This is McCoy outside. It's the same starting lineup for both teams as we begin the second half, and UNC Charlotte's Jarvis Lang comes up with the ball. See Kenny Harris trying to make that pass from way out on the perimeter, and again, it's too long of a pass. Lang is too quick. And from the outside, Davis rim the three, and Kendrick Warren has the miss, and VCU looking for the early offense. Harris got in no man's land, gets it off to Kasurin, though, who rolls it in. First field goal in the game for Eugene Kasurin, giving three points, and we're tied at 29. Well, it has been a while since we have been tied. It may have been 0-0. It was very early in the game, that's for sure. Sonny Smith's team has completed the comeback, at least to this point, and Jeff Mullins not at all pleased with the turn of events. Kendrick lost Lang that time, and Jarvis didn't realize it was on guarding him. Odom in traffic, rolls it across the rim, and Kasurin, the VCU rebound up to Harris. Oh, they had Warren open momentarily, didn't get it to him. Now McCoy from the outside, and Davis goes up high to get the board. Big time board. It was indeed by the 6'1 freshman, and he takes it all the way and flips it in, and he's in double digits with 11. Davis highlight film with the big rebound and then going coast to coast. Andre Davis is career best 26 against Southern Miss that Terry mentioned earlier in Metro play. And UNC Charlotte has already won a couple of games on the road in the league. Here's Warren against Lang is opposite number 23. Lost it, picks it up and sticks it in. Kendrick staying with it, but again, Lang with the quick hands inside. I, you know, they're going to have to go to Warren, but somebody else on his side has got to take some of the pressure off of him. Thompson being checked outside by Harris. VCU has really picked up the intensity on defense. Thompson against Harris, flips it up, didn't get it, but he draws the Harris foul. First foul on Kenny Harris. Oh, they got McCoy on it. I thought it was Harris. Make that correction. That is the first on McCoy. Take it away from Kenny Harris. And for Sean Thompson to the line. One of the tri captains gets his first point in the second half, giving him six in the game. This guy leads the team in assists. And Warren gets the miss. 
32-31, UNC Charlotte. Warren against Lang, flips it up, and Odom goes in to get it for the 49ers. Now, if they get him the basketball on the block, he's got to be able to score. Good cut. Yep. Good cut after the overplay. Harris extending out, and that's what you're going to get against that little back door. And give the bucket to Bashan Thompson, and then Terrence Gibson comes right back and nails his first three of the game, giving 14 trays on the year, and we're tied at 34. You know, it's taking a couple of minutes in the second half to get the emotion back into it. And that happened in the first half. They both squads here in the second half trying to get everything going. Thompson, a good strong move, but had it slipped away. The Rams have a three on two. Nope, nope, and nope. Harris, he committed the uh, turnover. A little quick there. Sometimes I think you think too much. You know, Sunny Town, keep it simple. The old kiss theory. Just keep it simple. He's going to go to his left, make a fake, and I think, yep, he wants to go there. <laughs> he picks it back up. Almost got away with it. He did it so quickly, and then there's a steal by Warren, and then he throws it, trying to get it to a teammate, and Jarvis Lang picks it up for the 49ers. And Odom down low. He can't get it, and McCoy now leads it up for VCU. McCoy, the tray. I tell you what, Terry, if this guy begins to light it up like he did early in the year, better look out for VCU, especially Metro tournament time. Well, they were shooting three-pointers at a rate of about 50% for the first third of the year. McCoy was a big part of that, and then they really went away from it. They weren't able to hit. You're right. I think he's a key. Odom in a lot of traffic. Doesn't get the hoop, but draws the foul. VCU leading by three at 37 to 34. <laughs> First foul on Kendrick Horn. The lob and the weak side help gets there, but a little bit light. Nice spin move. Odom always under control, and you see he didn't put the ball on the floor. Just the pivot, and Kendrick pleads for the official, says he didn't do it. And Warren getting the rest, and Sonny Smith said that he was going to try to get Warren some more rest in each game than he's been able to do earlier, and Odom is only one out of three at the line. Yeah, but Rodney Odom did so many of the, the things in the middle right, the, the simple things. You know, like not putting the ball on the floor. He goes straight up. He cashes in on one out of two. Jeff Mullins and UNC Charlotte led most of the first half, and now they trail by two. And, of course, uh, we'll go back to the Metro right back here in Richmond next week when the Bulls of South Florida come to town at 7.30. Check the game and time in your area. How about Arizona State shooting 40% uh, of their shots are three-point shots? <laughs> I tell you what, Bill Frieder has them launching them from the bus. A blocking foul down low against UNC Charlotte. And I think it's going to be ticketed against... Rodney Odom. It was interesting in the USA Today. On the, uh, as you look at Kenny Harris going baseline, Odom didn't quite get there. He tried to take the charge, but uh -uh. But uh, how every year since its inception, teams are going to the three-point shot more, but hitting a lower percentage. It's amazing, isn't it? Sharon Mills hits it off the baseline. Second time that VCU has scored out of their out-of-bounds against the man-to-man. -man. We'll see if Jeff Mullick sticks with that underneath his own basket. This is the largest VCU lead in the game for... Charlotte enjoyed several leads and double digits in the first 20 minutes. But that comeback late in the first half, a big difference. Thompson missed it from the outside. Broadhurst tried to save it, but couldn't get there. Malru Dotton is checked back into the UNC Charlotte lineup. So VCU up by four, and the Rams have possession of the ball. 24 is Kareem Washington giving uh, McCoy a blow. And Jeff Mullins coming back with a big lineup. Aaron Wilhite comes into the game. He'll replace Odom. So you've got right now, you've got Jarvis Lang out of the ball game, Rodney Odom out of the ball game. Offensively, who do the 49ers go to? The last time down, they struggled, had the air ball by Thompson. And you've got the big lineup in for VCU. Concern, good ball movement over to Harris for three. 
Bills gets the rebound, kicks it right back out to Harris. So you got the big lineup in there. What do they do? They shoot a three. <laughs> That's right. Just figure, what you think, right? Figure that one. <laughs> oh, he got a kick. He got away with yeah, the kick. He sure did. Time. Should have been a reset and a possession of VCU, but Broadhurst picks it up off his sneaker and then is fouled as he brings it into the front court. Cedric Broadhurst gets a hand on a lot of basketballs. He had six steals against South Florida. This time, didn't get a hand on it, got a foot on it. Let's see, the right foot. Yeah, he got away with it, did it quickly. You play soccer, and you uh, you act as if you never touched it with your foot. <laughs> Fouls on Kenny Harris, his first. Third BCU foul of the second half. 39-35, the Rams with the lead, Thompson the tray. And Kassurin has the rebound and draws the foul from Aaron Wilhite. Sonny Smith has to feel better about things. You know, he has continued to tell us, Terry, time and time again, if we get things clicking, this is a very good ball club. Oh, I think so. I, I think uh, if you get a McCoy shooting the outside jump shot like he did earlier in the year, if you get the Kassorn and Mills playing together, and you get used to that rhythm, that substitution pattern. You can go a big lineup, a small lineup. Well, there's some talent here. Bobby Coomer back in for the 49ers. Kassurin against Dotton. And Mills comes to the rescue outside. 13 minutes and 50 seconds left in this one in the Richmond Coliseum. 39-35, VCU. And they'll spread it, let Kenny Harris drive and dish or take the shot. And he draws the foul from Davis. They cleared it out and let so, uh, Harris take it one-on-one. -on -one. That's nice. You know, coaches have different philosophies. Some like the defense in front of them in the second half. Shuddy Smith tonight with the offense in front. He was able to make that call. And after they didn't get anything out of the initial offense, they went to the spread. And he's up and making the call here again. Davis, by the way, picked up his second personal. 13 foul on Charlotte in the second half. Surin really working hard to get a shot, and Wilhite has him covered up. But he wanted to let the three fly again. He did. He wanted the three ball. That's for sure. There's Washington oh. through the lane, way off balance, and an offensive foul. Cardinal rule, you leave your feet more often than not, and you're going to regret it. Well, you got to come down somewhere, and if yeah. the only place to come down is on a green jersey, you're in trouble. Kareem goes up, nowhere to go. He loses the handle. I think he wanted to dish that ball, but once he lost the handle, he couldn't give it up. He couldn't go up with the shot, and you got to credit the defense stepping in, taking the charge. First foul on Washington. Possession, UNC Charlotte. A whistle prior to the shot, and I think they're going to get Kasurin again inside. Of course, one of the two Russians on the team that actually came here by way of the exchange students, George Borden, the VCU trainer, was in the Soviet Union, the then Soviet Union, as an Olympic volleyball team trainer, and then made some friends. And there's not only two men basketball players for VCU, but two women as well. They play for the Lady Rams. Davis, the tray, too strong. Coomer, the follow. A real scramble for it, and finally Mills comes out of there with it. And here they go. McCoy, freshly blocked by Coomer. And a lot of people have been out of shape right now. I think they wanted Mills on a travel, A, and then they thought there was a foul prior to the travel. And the board in the uh, start of the fast break. Mills does a nice job. Here he just throws it back, but he looks up the court well. They push it up, and I think they get Broadhurst with the foul. McCoy soaring, yeah, he got it right on the right arm, and he stopped him from getting the fast break bucket. The foul goes to Broadhurst, but once again, every opportunity VCU gets, they look to push it up. McCoy, you can see having a good night, but misses the free throw. Jeff Mullins making a couple of changes, going to get Odom and Lang back in the game. Well, he got him a rest. He got him a, about a three-minute rest or so, and the scores the same. So he was able to rest Lang and Odom without losing anything. So Wilhite will go out, as will Malru Dotton. Okay, they're three for four with the pressure here. After the main free throw, they go back to the full court trap. We'll see what happens. 40-35, VCU. There's a good double team. 
And this time the 49ers break it easily. Broadhurst off it goes to Lang and he's hammered. Perfect execution against the pressure that time. A little, probably a little discussion about that at the intermission, would you think? I would imagine so. I'm sure Jeff Mullins drew some things on the blackboard about breaking that pressure. Broadhurst gives it up nicely, and you know that Jarvis is going for the dunk. Warren doesn't want to let him have it. He draws the foul, but there was going to be a confrontation. He was not going to let him dunk the ball. Those two number 23s both play above the rim. Second foul on Kendrick Warren. First point of the second half for Jarvis Lang. He has nine in the contest. I really think in the first half, and now here, since he's come off the bench with the, with the dunk attempt here, he's had more bounce in his step, more confidence than I've seen him. Obviously, I haven't seen him play every game, but you know, he was in kind of a slump after trying to go to the small forward, go back to the power forward down. I think Jarvis Lane is back. I think he's much more comfortable in his old position, so to speak. Even though he's only a sophomore, I don't guess he could do that. Okay. Very talented player, as is this guy, Kendrick Warren. 40-37. VCU reclaimed the lead in the second half and has been able to hang on since then. Mills over Odom. That's a tough shot. Pretty turnaround, and Mills has not been a real factor offensively. Eight points for Sharon in the game. He's very comfortable off that baseline. And Odom tries to counter. He comes up short. Rebound Washington. And the Ram early offense. Boy, Kendrick stops on a dive and twirls. Well, he does. McCoy. can light it up in a hurry as well. Little paper airplane action from the crowd as Sonny Smith tries to get them to uh, refrain from throwing anything. The only flight that'll get out of Richmond tonight. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> That's about it. Jeff Mullins pondering the situation, and he'll have time to talk about it. 11-27 left in regulation in Richmond, Virginia. 40-40, 44-37, VCU. Hi, I'm Chris Brower, a basketball player at Virginia Commonwealth University. As a college student, I witnessed so many of my peers looking for a high. Unfortunately, they often turn to uncontrolled substances, drugs. If you're looking for a high, try athletics. It's habit-forming and addictive, and will give you a high you will never want to come down from. Athletics in the Metro Conference is class action. going up and down, or not over the net necessarily, but certainly up and down the floor. 49ers struggling in the second half. They have only two field goals, and we have played almost half of this half. You know, Rodney Odom does a good job when he gets the ball in that position there, Terry, as he just did. To know what he's doing, as you mentioned, and there he draws the foul. Well, he just takes his time. Does so many players rush when they get the ball in there. I mean, he, watch him take his time. He looks. Where's the defense? Here. He's down low. He steps to the middle, the fake. He draws Mills up in the air. He draws the foul. And there wasn't a bounce there, just the pivot, the turn, the look, and the foul. And Odom has been struggling at the free throw line. Only one out of four. 56% he shoots the freebies on the year. A seven point lead for VCU, 11 minutes. First, first look at the 2 3 zone for the 49ers. And we'll see what BCU does. Sonny's out directing traffic. McCoy is shooter on the outside. Gibson can shoot it from the outside. If they stay in this, don't be surprised to see a Brower come off the bench. Washington with that penetration, and he turns it over. Traveled with it. That's not what Sonny wanted. Credit Jeff Mullins, though, out of the timeout. Changing the defense, giving him a different look. And they did not adjust to it. Jeff, as usual, working that gum over there. I really thought VCU would play some zone tonight. They've been in the straight man-to-man. -man. And right now, obviously, with the seven-point lead doing all right, but I thought they'd force the outside shot from, from Charlotte much more. This is Coomer. Tries to flip it over underneath to Odom, knocked out of bounds by VCU. And you know, Terry, you touched on it earlier, too. I think where it really started against Jeff Mullins' team tonight is when VCU 
turned up the notch defensively. Yeah, they did. They got a couple of turnovers uh, on the full court. Then the half court, they just played pressure basketball, and that turned it around. And Always a, a of, hand in the face. And a, and a couple of easy buckets off of that. Davis misses. Gibson. Washington thought about it. Now thinks better of it. And back to the zone. A seven-point Ram lead. If you're a McCoy, you look to step in the seam and you catch the ball ready to shoot. There it is. There's McCoy for the three. And Mills hustles and chases down the loose ball. And you get a second shot at it. So they reset the shot clock. I think what happens too is if a team doesn't play a zone that often, it's really tough to rebound out of that. You don't know where your rebounding assignments are. Warren from the baseline comes up short, but he draws the Coomer foul. Yeah, he let him out of jail because Kendrick did not have control of the basketball. And Bobby Coomer upset with the call and himself. The dish down low, and Kendrick really didn't have a good handle on it. Coomer got him right on the wrist. Not a good foul along the baseline. Broadhurst leaves the lineup. As does Washington for VCU. Kendrick Horn, only 51% as a free throw shooter, but he gets this one. You look at Kendrick Horn as a player, he's got so much talent, he's so fun to watch. We said he can explode at any time. Free throw is perhaps his biggest weakness, and I think sometimes decisions down the stretch, when to shoot, when to take it over, when not to, when to back off. Those two areas you can improve on, Doug. Eight-point lead for BCU. Make it six as Rodney Odom gets the tip in to go to double digits with 10. Well, Rodney got the tip in, but Lang was soaring. He was. He was up above the rim. He was up where that paper airplane was a moment ago. <laughs> Coming down. A six-point game. We're under nine minutes. McCoy to Trey. And Warren tried to slam it down and got it hung on the rim. Wasn't quite up and up. Kendrick tried to get it over the lip and could not. Nice move and bank job by Andre Davis. But it's a four-point play there. Warren should have had the tip in it. Andre Davis comes down and kisses one off the glass. And now you've got Brower along the sidelines coming back in. That may bring UNC Charlotte out of the zone. Gibson. Straight away to Harris. Gibson again. That's a big three-pointer there by Terrence Gibson. He's hit two of them in the game, and both of them have been at big time. It's huge because VCU not able to really get it inside. They've got to get the outside score. 48-41, Rams. Davis counters with the tray. Too strong, gets it back, tries a two, and count this one. Two in a row for Andre. Gibson. Jarvis Lang with the rejection. And picking up the loose ball for Sean Thompson. And Thompson takes it all the way and flips it in. Well, how about the defense from Lang, and then he tips it back in and starts the fast break. Didn't quit on it. And Charlotte now will, uh, well, they're not sure what they're going to do. Coomer doesn't know what he's in. He's asking, what are we in? They're in a man-to-man, -man, and he finally finds Harris. A three-point game. Who can take him? He's off. Bobby Coomer with the block. I was just about to say, Kenny Harris too quick for Coomer, and he sent it into the second row. <laughs> I tell you what, he took that one out of play. Seven minutes and 16 seconds left in regulation. We're in Richmond, Virginia. We have a good one going on in the Metro. 48-45, VCU. VCU up by three. This is not Bobby Coomer's game. He is not a shot blocker. He doesn't sky very often, but he gets his chance against Kenny Harris and sends it all the way to the sideline. Pretty nice catch on the sideline. Sign that guy up with the camera, and he gets fouled as well. He took a charge. And you want to see something surprising? VCU with a 10-rebound advantage against UNC Charlotte. They have not allowed Charlotte to go to the offensive class. The, you know, all night long, they've kept them off the offensive board. And as you mentioned earlier, Terry, this is the best rebounding team in the Metro. 12 best, and 
NCAA Division I basketball. Back to the man-to-man -man for the 49ers as Brower comes back in. Shot clock running down, and they did not recognize it. The ball went out of bounds with the block, right. and it, that rule changed, I guess, last year. You do not reset the shot clock. They didn't recognize it. People still forget that a lot. And Oldham gets it inside and rolls it in. Rodney with 12 of them in the game. And it's a one-point contest. I got a feeling this one's going to take it right down to the wire here. Blocking foul outside. I believe it's going to be against Kendrick Warren. Trying to set the screen down away from the basketball. And he moved right into Bobby Coomer. They're going to put it on Harris. Is that right? Yeah, they did. That's his second. They did put it on Harris. That's the way they put it up on the board. Well, I called the foul on Kendrick Warren. I saw him commit the foul. <laughs> Eight team fouls now. So Bobby Coomer, the freshman, will go to the line looking for his first point. And he gets it. 60% free tosser on the year. I got off to a blazing start for Jeff Mullins academically as well, making the Dean's list in his first collegiate semester. I'm sure you did that, right? A few times, right? A few times. First time. semester? I did. I'll get off my back. I did, for God's sake. Okay. Trying to make fun of me here. UNC Charlotte moves back in front <laughs> by one. Of course, I was at four points too. That's so. a kicker, though, right? <laughs> This is Kendrick Warren, and they get the grab against UNC Charlotte. Looked like there might have been a travel, but the foul came first. Now, Rue Dotton uh, is going to have a tough time if Kendrick Warren does take him outside. That's what Kendrick did. He can stay with him on the block with his side, but I'm not sure he can stay with him on the perimeter. First on Dotton, only the 16 foul. There's Warren making 17 fouls now as Broders. Got the foul, a second. And again, Kendrick coming from the outside, from the perimeter, and now Rue Dotton just can't stay with him. He just outquicked him that time. He beat him right down the lane with his quickness. He goes right to the hoop and draws the foul, but the initial rush by Kendrick is what got him the basketball. Well, they put the foul on the board against Odom. That can't be right. That you saw in the replay. It was broader. So I'm not going to argue. I saw Kendrick <laughs> Warren commit a foul a moment ago. All right. I guess they even it up. Kendrick continues to struggle at the charity strike and now finally hits double digits with 10. This game has been well officiated, though, with all the, the banging going on down low inside. Both teams trying to establish an inside game. The officials have really kept it under control. They certainly have. 49 all as we're under six minutes in this one. Richmond Coliseum in the Metro. And Warren comes up with a loose ball. Lost it momentarily. Brower, he'll take the three. Yes, the Sox. You could tell as soon as he crossed the half court line that that was going up. He, he's been in the ball game a while and hadn't gotten a three off. And he doesn't stay in very long without shooting. A near steal by McCoy. And then a foul against Harris. I tell you what, Chris Brower, the top three-point shooter in the Metro, shooting 44% from behind the arc, 18% from inside that paint. Well, he's only taken like a couple of shots out inside of the, <laughs> the three-point line. Almost every shot he's taken is outside the three, and that's way outside the three. Off the break, off the dribble, an NBA three-pointer. The guy has got some rage. And he's known for his renowned socks. Jarvis lying back in for UNC Charlotte. Now Rue Dotton to the bench. Sean Thompson. For the 49ers back to their original lineup. They'll go the rest of the way with this crew. Thompson misses the front end of the one and one. So that graphic tells the entire story here in the Metro tonight on Prime. Another three Brower. You know, you can just hear the crowd before he gets the basketball. They know what's going up, and they're ready to explode. And it seems like every time he hits a three, it comes at a crucial time for the Rams. And look at the defense. More pressure off the two threes. They get a little bump, a little juice. Lang, the spinning jumper, not there. Rebound McCoy. So the Rams by six. See if they try to get it to Brower again. He's working this time, though. He's covered up by Davis. 
Here's Warren. Great move. Didn't get the roll. Oh, VCU has been effective outside of that. Oh, way with the dunk. Serious. Keep playing it. 12 for Jarvis Lang. And it's a four point game. Jarvis just beats you down the court. He never stops working. Hey, Dan, how about this? VCU, seven out of 16 from three point range tonight. Make it eight now. Seven out of 17. This time, Harris tried it, didn't get it. How about a tray for Thompson? And Oldham, great hustle to get the loose ball. He created it and then was able to chase it down and it's kicked out of bounds off the knee of Kasura. And now Sonny Smith getting Sharon Mills, number 40, back into the lineup as Kasurin will go to the VCU bench. Four minutes and one second left in regulation. You joined us late, UNC Charlotte pretty much dominated the first half. But VCU made its comeback to pull within a bucket intermission and then has taken the lead and held on to it most of the second half. But Jarvis Lang trying to change it. Yeah, and this is when point guards become so important. Thompson with a nice dish down low. He knew what they wanted to do offensively. Let's see what Kenny Harris does as he sets up the offense. Where do they want to go? Who do they want to get the ball? Brower takes it, whips it inside the Warren over Lang, and Jarvis gets the foul as Kendrick rolls it across the rim. Well, that's nice, too, because, you know, once Brower hits a couple, you've got to come out and play him, and that opens up everything. When he's on Kendrick Warren's side, you can't help. It's the only Jarvis Lang is on Kendrick Warren. Normally, there's another guy digging down from the perimeter. He's all alone, and he gets the foul on the arm. Well, Kendrick Warren makes the free throw, giving him 11 points in the game. A three-point ram advantage. Three and a half minutes left. And you can tell Warren, as always, has done a good job on the board. He had one out of two. Loose ball, though. McCoy scrambles for it. But on the floor, coming up with a loose ball for Sean Thompson. A big possession here for UNC Charlotte. Rashad setting it up. See if they go to Lang on the block. Nope, they got Andre. And a three. Lang, though, gets involved on the second try. Like I said, they go to Lang down low. Yeah, right, they did. You call him that a pass, right? The indirect route. <laughs> the detour. Boy, he gets up so quickly. Boy, He's had a great ball game. Yeah, it really has. 16 points for Jarvis Lang. It's been fun to watch. And there's a three. McCoy. Boy, I tell you what. Sonny Smith's team may miss some key free throws, but they get some crucial three-pointers. Takes it to four. Odom in traffic. Boy, nice pass to Thompson in it. Rashawn was surprised, but Rodney Oldham can't follow. And a foul on Sharon Mills. Boy, Odom couldn't get it to go, but a great sequence on the offensive glass for the 49ers. VCU has kept them off all night long, as we said. But on this possession, Odom crashes, Thompson crashes, everyone going to the board, and there's the reach in right along the baseline. Third foul on Sharon Mills, 10th team foul, so the double bonus from here out for UNC Charlotte. For Sean Thompson, one of the tri-captains. And he rimmed it. He's made only one out of four at the line, and he's a 60% free throw shooter. With 2.26 left, you have to hit the freebies. Especially if you're the guy who has the ball in your hands most of the way down the stretch. 2.26 left in this one in Richmond Coliseum. Jeff Mullins and the 49ers trail it by three. But we're in the Metro tonight. And the Richmond Coliseum faithful having a good time. The Rams lead it by three with 2.26 left on the Richmond Coliseum clock. Well, the inside game trying to be established tonight from the get-go, but the, the outside shooting tells a lot of the story. You want to see Charlotte 0 for 8 in the second half. You look at 2 for 15 overall, and 8 by VCU. But they turn it over, Don, trying to get it down low. That's it. 
You come out of the timeout. Coaches really like to score out of their timeout, setting something up. Big turnover. So, VCU with the mistake. And let's see if the 49ers for UNC Charlotte can make them pay. Odom against the double team. And a lot of traffic banks it up and in. Big hoop by Rodney Odom. Boy, the Rams tried to force the ball out of his hands back out, and he just split the double team. The Ram lead is one. That's the time left in regulation. And here down the stretch, Kendrick Warren out of the ball game. So who do you go to offensively? Maybe a Mills. Here he is. You don't want him to take the ball out there, though. You don't want him to make a mistake on the perimeter. He's got to get back down low in the paint. Shot clock is at 18. Game clock at 118. Harris under 10 now on the shot clock. He's going to create out of the spread. He pulls up, rejected by Lang, and they're going to call goaltending, and Jeff Mullins is livid. You know, I'm not sure whether that was goaltending or not, but I think when a Jarvis Lang comes flying from the weak side, it just shocks you. I mean, it surprises you that he even gets there. Kenny Harris up over Odom. Look at how high Lang is, and throw that ball right near the zenith, right near the top of the peak. Jeff Mullins didn't think. And it was a goal tip. Well, that's a tough one to go against the 49ers. A three-point game as we're under a minute now. Thompson will take the trade and rid it. Thompson wrapped it around and through for three, and we're tied at 61. And there is a difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sonny's going to call timeout to set something up. So the Rams use the timeout. 42 and 5, 10 seconds left. 61 61 in the Metro on Prime back in a moment. And we're in the Richmond Coliseum, the Rams of VCU and the 49ers of UNC Charlotte knotted up at 61. About a three second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sonny Smith with his offensive team in, everyone out there could score. Do they get the timeout? Yeah, McCoy able to call a timeout out of the man-to-man -man by UNC Charlotte denying the inbounds pass. Uh, Tyrone did the smart thing, give Jeff Mullen's team credit for the good deed of force VCU to take that timeout. So we'll take another break on Prime Network. 42 and 5, 10 seconds left in this one in Richmond. 61 all. Well, that graphic tells the entire story as we're winding it down in regulation and a good one in the Metro as we expected, Terry, and uh, a good job defensively by Charlotte to force that timeout by VCU back-to-back. -back. Yeah, and again, Sonny's got his offensive lineup out there. Everyone out there can score. You've got Brower, Harris, McCoy on the outside can shoot the threes. Against the man-to-man, -man, I think they'll take the best first shot they get. If they get a good shot, they'll take it. I don't think they'll wind it all the way down. Harris working outside against Bershawn Thompson. Going to have to worry about the five-second count. Like they're going to try to kill the clock. They're going to try to wind it all the way down. That is the game clock. You see the shot clock about two seconds less than that. It's not easy to do against that man-to-man -man pressure, Doc. Shot clock is at 12. Kenny Harris has got to create. Shot clock is at five. Harris slips it in. Charlotte. Kenny Harris wound it all the way down, and he brings the Richmond Coliseum faithful to their feet. Boy, what a big drive by Harris, huh? They have done that a number of times tonight. They like to run it down to about seven, eight seconds, let Harris create, either dish off or go straight up for the shot. He comes in under control. They don't want to follow him straight up and a big, big bucket, but the quick timeout by UNC Charlotte at this point. You see Odom come over. He just wants to stop the penetration at this point. Good body control by Kenny Harris and the bucket. But what you do now is you've got six seconds left in the game, and you allow UNC Charlotte to go ahead, and if they hit a three, to beat you. There was about a three, four second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Sonny Smith elects to go down to the wire and take all that time off of it. Now you put the pressure on Charlotte, but it's in their hands now. And they can beat you with a three, or they control it, and they can tie you with a two. 
Now the Ram cheerleaders and the people here in Richmond have seen two consecutive outstanding ball games from the Rams. A disappointing overtime loss to Louisville, as we mentioned last Saturday, but could be a different story here tonight. A couple of schools have fought on that last possession. Some coaches like to go ahead and score as soon as they can. You know, go ahead, if you get a good shot, take it. Because you might get it back after that. You put the pressure on UNC Charlotte. You run it down, they still have a shot. Either way, the 49ers were going to have a shot to win the game here at the end. Now what do you look for from the 49ers? Well, obviously, you got to get it in, and then you worry about yeah, it. Yeah, they've struggled against the pressure. But what it allows is if you do get a quick pass up the court, you can not open some things up here. They've also gotten a couple of easy buckets against the pressure. Odom will take it out of bounds. Gets it into Thompson. Thompson up on the dribble, still on the move, kicked out of bounds, and they say it belongs to UNC Charlotte. There is 1.1 seconds left. And UNC Charlotte takes a timeout. It looked like VCU did a good job defensively. But Jeff Mullins gets the possession. And now he's got a little bit more than one tick of the clock try to come up with a hoop. Well, I tell you, I, I'm not sure how you make that call as an official. That's a great call right away. I, I couldn't tell whose foot it went off of. I I'm glad tell. I didn't have to make That's it. exactly right. We're sitting here just <laughs> talking about it on the sideline. Jeff Mullen now diagramming what he wants to do. Whether it's against a man-to-man -man or a zone, he's going to create a play that, uh, that gets a shot off very quickly. You have to go towards the basket. I'm not sure you have enough time to throw it all the way back out and take an outside shot. There's a look at it. I still don't know who's put it went off. I'll tell you what, you could use the replay and still not tell. It happened so quickly. Now, Sonny Smith, one thing he does not want to do here, Terry, is foul. No, you know, you're in the bonus at this point. You're exactly right. We'll see what Sonny comes out in, whether he comes out in the zone underneath the basket or matches up man-to-man. -man. If you match up, you got to be careful with the screens that you don't allow someone to get open underneath the basket. So UNC Charlotte, one thing about it, they will have the ball beneath their hoop, which can be good and bad. And it's going to be Bershawn Thompson to take it out of bounds. A two to tie, a three to win. And it comes in, Davis the three, and he oh. rimmed it. VCU hangs on for a two-point win, and the magic continues here in Richmond Coliseum against the 49ers of UNC Charlotte. 63-61 the final. The Rams over the 49ers. Back with more in a moment. And now it's time to take a look at tonight's GMC truck play of the game, and it ends up being the game winner as junior Kenny Harris Winding down the shot clock and the game clock, the penetration, the dribble drive, and the basket. And that is our GMC truck play of the game. Now let's go to Terry Gannon. Terry? All right, Donnie, thank you very much. With a very happy uh, Sonny Smith right now. I tell you, came down to the wire. What were you thinking on the last possession, what they tried to do? We were thinking they're going to throw a lob up for Lang. And they set him out during the run to the basket. And we told them not to foul the three-point shooters, but we'd like to have a little bit more pressure on them than that. We'd rather the game be tied up and put them on the line with three. So we, uh, I think we, we had the right strategy, and the guys did a good job on Rashawn Thompson trying to dribble it all the way to the basket. That was good. This is our worst effort because we couldn't get up and get going, but we had to win when we played bad. We would have lost this last year the way things went against you. The oh, last yeah. shot would have went in. Things turning around in a big well, way. They are. Right and one of the main reasons that's happening, Terry, is because this guy right here. He's got a lot of poise, and he's starting to come into his own as a point guard. He's taking over. He's second in the Metro on assists now. We're going to be a much better basketball team with him. Coach, thanks. I'm going to talk to Kenny real quick. Just a real quick 10-second. Tell me what you were thinking on the last drive. Well, I know um, Coach wanted me to keep it if I could, and if um, anybody stepped up, then he wanted me to dish it off to the big man. And unfortunately, they uh, sagged off, so I just went up and laid it in. Big, big shot. Congratulations, thank Kenny. You. Let's go back to Don Russell. Okay, Terry, thank you very much. A uh, big win for VCU, 63-61. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Around the Rim here on Prime Network. I'm Al Koken, along with John Feinstein. Before the year, Sonny Smith vowed 
that if he did not have a winning season, he would quit. So it was a big victory for him tonight. Very big victory, but partly because of that, but also because now at 11 and 6, they move into that February phrase in college basketball on the bubble position for the NCAA tournament. We'll hear that phrase over and over. Virginia Commonwealth now one of those teams. Well, we'll hear more from Virginia Commonwealth, the side of tonight's first game and of Louisville. our doubleheader. The second with a 58-42 lead over South Florida. John, South Florida, one of the mysterious teams in the country this year. Well, it's not really that big a mystery. They lost their best player, Rodenko Dobras, off of last year's team, which was an NCAA tournament team. Still, no one expected them to be this bad at 4-13. and Louisville's dominated the Metro, which tells me, since they can't beat anybody outside the Metro, that other than Tulane, the Metro is, a, and, and Louisville, of course, the Metro's a little bit down this year. Well, as we mentioned, a big victory for Sonny Smith tonight as VCU knocks off UNC Charlotte 63 to 61. Let's head back out and out of the site of the game as we rejoin Don Russell and Terry Gannon. Gentlemen. You see the final from Richmond Coliseum, a good one in the Metro, 63-61. to 61. VCU wins it over UNC Charlotte. And uh, Terry Gannon, we talked about it being a pivotal game. Indeed it was. And the Rams have had a lot of tough luck in the Metro in the past, but a big win here tonight at home. Well, I mentioned to Sonny last year that shot would have definitely gone in. He lost a number of games, you know, right at the buzzer last year. And, and this year he gets it done uh, with the miss by Andre Davis. But a big game for VCU. They lose at home on Saturday in overtime to Louisville they had to come back they couldn't go one and four in the Metro and have any shot at, at coming in first second or third right now they're right in the thick of things well let's take you back to the real important plays on the round the rim as we if you didn't have a ch chance to see this when it ran all the way down to the end and here ends up being the game winner right here Terry. well the difference between Kenny Harris at the beginning of the year of course he transferred from Carolina and right now he make this play down the stretch he took control they spread it out he drove and made the game winner and of course here's the last possession too I thought, like Sonny Smith did, they try to throw something at the rim, maybe to a Lang with his great leaping ability, but they bring Andre Davis around, a wide open three-point shot. It rims in and out. That's a guy who can bury that three. Just didn't go tonight. A two-point win for VCU over UNC Charlotte in the Metro Conference. For Terry Gannon, I'm Don Russell. Let's go back now to Al and John with more of Around the Rim. All right, guys, thank you very much. So, Sonny Smith with the big victory. This is one of the more colorful coaches in college basketball. Reporters always pull for a guy like Sonny Smith. He has a wealth of stories. One of my favorites is the night at Auburn when during a game he pulled out his eye doctor's card, <laughs> handed it to a referee, and said, I want you to go see this man. He can help you. Sonny Smith gets it done, and as we told you, the vow before the start of the season, a winning season, or he is gone so far. He's keeping his promise for that winning year. When we continue, a look at the top 25 and some more college comments from John Feinstein as Around the Rim moves on right here on Prime Network.